All right. Well, let's let's see if I can um, I can get something on uh, on the video for session five that one, which we're going to be talking about tonight, um, and that is on composite functions. Okay, that is on composite functions. So session session five that one is on composite functions. We're moving now into session five, which talks about um, exponential and logarithmic functions. Okay. Um, so we'll move right into session uh, 5.1. Um, and uh, we say we say that given two functions f and g, given these two functions, given uh, these two functions f and g. Uh, we say that um, the composite function, the composite function uh, denoted by um, f of g, that's how you read it, f of g or f the function f composed with the function g and typically this is how you see it written f of g of x this is how you see it written right the function f is composed with another function g right and this translates it into if we have the function f composed with the function g it is the same as saying that the function f of x um, Sorry, it is written as the function f of g of x. This is the composite function. The composite function of f and the composite function. Um, sorry, this is the composition of the two functions f and g. Okay, so when we say that if the composite function uh, would mean that f is composed with some function g and it's written as f of g of x. And f of g of x is translated as the function f of g of x. Now what this one means is that um, anywhere in the function f, you see x, you replace it with the function g of x, right? And we're gonna be looking at that. So uh, anytime that we talk about a composite function, this is exactly what we mean, that two functions are being composed, or uh, f is composed with uh, with a function g. Okay, hopefully you, 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 uh, you've seen that. Uh, so right away I'm going to, uh, let's say what this one means is that let's say that we have some input x, all right? There's some input x here. We'll put this input x here into some into some uh, container, okay? And so the input goes in into this container, it does whatever it has to do, and then it comes out, the output comes out that way. Okay? So you have some input, you put it in some container of where the container of G of X, and G of X uses that input X that you put in there. Uh, to process it and then output that um, as um, f of g of x, and that is a composite function. Okay, so let's go right ahead and look at some examples of uh, uh, composite functions. Let's say that I have the function, I have the function. Um, I have, uh, so suppose that we have f of x equals 2x squared minus 3 and g of x uh, and g of x equals um, 4x, okay? This, uh, uh, these are two different uh, 
uh, functions. And if you're asked to find the composite function, uh, find a composite function uh, one, let's say the function f of g of one. Two, we say g of f of one, and three, we set a function f of f of f, the function f of f of negative two. Okay. The function f of f of negative 2. So if we take the function, if we take the first one, the function f of g of 1, what this one translates to mean is, um, first of all, the function f of g of x is 4x. So what, is, what, it, what this one implies here is, that anywhere in the function g, you see x replace it by 1. So you have a function g of x, now it becomes what? 4 times 1, which is what? 4. So you have g of x to be what? 4. Okay, now go back into what you're being told to do, because what you're doing is now you're composing the function f of g of 1. The function g of 1 is 4. So meaning that anywhere in the function f of x, you see x, you replace it with what? 4. And our function f of x, our function f of x is 2x squared minus what? 3. So what it means is that this function f of g of 1 equals 2, 4 squared minus what? 3. Okay? And... That is going to give us, that gives us 16, that gives us what? 32, and 32 minus this will give us what? 29. So your answer here is 29. Okay? Your answer here is 29. So first, when you when you have the function, when the function is given, two functions will be given to you, okay? Um, and in this, in this case, the function, the domain of this function here is a set of all real numbers, right? The domain of f, domain of f is a set of all real numbers. Um, all real numbers. And the domain of g of x is also the set of all real numbers. All right. Okay. But the composition of f composed with a function g of one, meaning that first, Take the function g, take the inner function g. Anywhere in the inner function g, which is given to you as 4x, anywhere you see x, replace it by 1. So in that function here, anywhere you saw x, you replaced it by 1, and so your g of x became what? 4. Okay. And then you go back to the original question because you're trying to... Uh, you're trying to... Um, uh, evaluate the function f of g of 1 and g of 1 is 4 so meaning that anywhere in the function f which is uh, which is this anywhere in the function f you see x replace it will do this with 4 and so you replace it with 4 4 squared is 16 16 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32 minus minus 3 is obviously is 29 so that was the first example okay so ho obviously uh, hopefully you've seen that and we're gonna move since the board is uh, the white board is small. Since the white board is small, or you know, won't fit in a whole lot, I'm gonna obviously take that one out, and then we're gonna go to two. Uh, two says we're gonna evaluate the function f of f of. Uh, uh, f of g of 1, no, sorry, g of f of 1, 
Okay, so first, what you want to evaluate is you want to evaluate what this one translates here is the same as saying a g of f of one. This is what it means. Okay, so first we're going to evaluate the function f of one, and we know that function uh, f of x is what two x squared minus three, and so we're substituting one here, so it becomes two minus what three, which is minus one. So we go back and now. Since we know that f of one is negative one, we will now evaluate f of g of negative what? one. So meaning anywhere in the function g, we see x, we replace it with what? One. So that becomes four, negative one, this becomes what? Negative four, okay? So that's how you find composite functions, okay? Um, and so we go in again, uh, we, we, the question is that we're finding g of g of f of one. g of f of one translates into g of f of one, all right? This here, this is how it's translated into, okay? And then so you take the inner function, which g is being composed with, um, and the inner function is f of one, meaning that anywhere in the function f, as you know, if you see x, you replace it by one. That's how you evaluate the function f of one. So f of one gave you negative one. You go back to your original function. Now you are going to evaluate this because f of one gave you negative one. Okay, and this is this is f of one. So you substitute negative one here. Um, any function, any anywhere in that function, you see x, you replace it by negative one, and then you solve for this. Okay, so the solution now is that. Um, we move on to the last one, the third one, says that you take the function f and you compose it by the same function uh, of negative two, okay? That's what it means. We're composing the function, we're composing it by the same function, meaning that this is translated as f of f of negative two, okay? Meaning anywhere in the function f of x, I see, so I'm gonna evaluate f of negative two, which gives me two, negative two squared, minus three, that will imply this will give me four, eight, minus this will give me five. Okay, so that gave me five, and then I'll go back to the original function um, and say it's f of what? Five, which is again, two, five squared minus three. That is 25, that is 50. And so you have 50 minus what? Three, which is what? Uh, 47 right so that is how you evaluate uh, composite functions obviously like we said here the domain of f of x is a set of all real numbers the domain of f of x here is a set of all real numbers so the domain of the composite function since the domain here is the set of all real numbers the domain here is a set of all real numbers the, com the domain of the composite function f of f of uh, g of x is also what set of all real numbers. Okay, so you know what, I'm gonna try and make this video a little bit shorter, that way the uploader won't take me a whole night to, uh, to upload. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this, is, this, this helps. Okay. Um, next thing we're gonna do is, um, uh, Let's find, uh, let's find a composite function and its domain, okay? Um, so assuming that we're finding a composite function and its domain, we have, um, so composite function, uh, what if I call it CF, which is composite function and its domain, okay? So assuming that we have the function f of x equals, um, S squared plus three X minus one. S squared plus three X minus one. And we have the function G of X equals um, two X plus three, two X plus three, okay? Here we do know that the domain of F of X is a set of all real numbers, obviously. There's not, you're not dividing by anything, okay? It's, it's not a rational function. 
here the domain here is also what the set of all real numbers but if you were to find the find the find a composite function uh, find one f of g and two and two g of f okay find f of f of uh, f of g and g of x now let's take one solution f of f of g um, this is what is translated as is f of g of x meaning we have the function we have the function f and then we, we're composing it with the function what g okay so what it means here is that anywhere in the function f i see x i'm going to replace it with the function what g or g of x okay that is what it means Anywhere in the function f, I see x, I'm going to replace it with the whole, the entire function of g of x. So, our function f of x um, said it was, f of x was this, x squared plus 3x minus 1, right? So, anywhere in this function, I see x, I'm going to replace it with the function this, 2x plus 3, right? So, here, what I have here is, I have 2x plus 3 squared because I just replaced the whole of x with that whole function and plus 3 to parentheses x 2x plus 3 and then minus 1 and then when I solve this I'm going to have this will give me um, 4x squared right plus um, uh, Uh, let's see, two times, so the product of, um, the product of this, so this is uh, 6x, uh, 6x, so that becomes 12x squared, plus 9, right, the product of this times that. Product of this is 2x, I mean 6x times 2, which is 12x plus, and then this becomes 6x plus 9 minus 1. So your your entire thing now becomes 4x squared uh, plus 18x, right? Um, plus 18x plus 8, plus 18 minus 1 plus 17. So your solution will look like this. 4 x squared plus 18x plus 17. Okay. Um, uh, let's move to, let's move to the second one, which is, what are we finding? We're finding the function g of f. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one down and solution we're gonna find g of f uh, which actually translates to what um, function g of f okay so anyway in a function uh, g we see x we replace it with a function f of x so that implies that a function g of x is 2 x and the x i'm going to replace it with with x squared plus 3x minus 1 right plus what three so that becomes 2x squared plus 6x minus 2 plus 3 your solution is 2x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 1 okay that is the solution for this and obviously like we said in the beginning the domain of this is the set of all real numbers the domain of this is a set of all real numbers Okay, so the domain of the composite function um, is a set of all real numbers. Uh, and okay, so that is, um, that is how you find 
you'll find the composite functions and their domain. Now, it's not always that you have a function that gives you the domain to the all real numbers. It's not always a function, the, the case that you have a domain that gives you what? Uh, that. So let's look at where you have some kind of rational uh, function um, to be the, fun the, the domain and um, how to find those. Okay. So here, let's do let's do find the domain of uh, uh, let's let's find the domain of this. So first, find the domain. Do we have f of x to be equal to x over plus 2 and g of x to be uh, 4 over x minus 1? Okay. So this year we we'll do know and what do we? Here is just to find the domain of, you realize that you have, you have not been told to find the composite functions. You are just asked to find the domain of, um, the domain of, uh, no, actually you're asked to find the domain of G of S, G, F of G, okay? So here, meaning F of G is the same, if you realize, well, this is uh, the same as right now, G of F composed with what? The function g of x. So first, what you want to do is you want to find the domain of the function f of x. And if you look, the function, the domain of the function f of x, domain here is uh, uh, x cannot be equal to what? Negative 2. So the domain here is a set of all real numbers except negative 2. The domain here, the domain for g of x is also that x cannot be equal to what? 1. Okay? So, you have... So you have the two domains, but what we do know is that, um, what we do know here is the function g of x. So obviously the domain of g of x will belong, will be part of the composite function of f of g of x. Okay. But what would not be the, the, the part of the domain here is the, uh, the g of, the domain of g of x cannot be equal to this function here. The, the, the function that is being composed with. Okay, so first you find you find the domain of your first function g of x. I mean f of x. You find your first function g of x. But we do know that the domain of f cannot be equal to what um, cannot be part of the, the entire composition of this function here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and exclude that domain because we're saying that it's not part of it. Okay, because it's a bigger uh, is the, the, the main function that is being composed with this, the, the, the inner function. So since we know that the domain of f of x is negative 2, we can safely say that um, uh, 4 divided by x minus 1, which is g of x, we're saying that this function here cannot be equal to negative 2. All right, so we, we will solve the equation 4 negative 4 divided by x minus 1 equals negative 2. And then that will include this domain. It's going to be, so we already know the domain of this, right? So now here is what we do. So if you, if you multiply it by x, x minus 1, 
multiply here by x minus 1. That cancels out. So we have 4 equals negative 2x plus what? 2. Okay. And so we have 2 equals negative 2x implies that x equals negative 1. So your domain of this function here, this uh, composite function here is a set of all x said that x is not equal to 1 or negative 1, write a minimum 1 first and then 1. Okay, so that is how you find the domain of a composite function, right? We, first, you find the domain of this function here, which is negative 2. You find the domain of this function here. But here, what we're looking at here is we have the function g of f of x, right? The domain of g of x is in the composition of this function here. But what is not part of this whole thing is the domain of what? f. So the, the domain of f uh, it's not, since it's not part of this whole comp uh, composite function, you will solve the equation, whatever the, 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 the function g of x is, equate that to the domain of f of x, and then solve for the, the additional domain. Okay? Solve for the additional domain. So um, when you have this, first when you have your inner function, so assuming that we were, we were finding uh, the domain of f of, we're finding the domain of this, which translates to the domain f of g of x. Okay. What we're saying here is that the domain of, the domain of f of x is what? Um, negative 2. We're going to keep that. Right? We're going to keep that. We're gonna keep that domain, but we do know that the domain of um, uh, g of x is negative is one, and so what we're gonna solve now is that the function f of the function f of uh, x cannot be equal to uh, one. So we're gonna solve for that and get it, the second domain or the additional domain. So here, what we have been solving for is that uh, the function. Um, what is it? 1 over x plus 2 minus equals negative 2. We solve this for the additional domain. So that would have given us 1 equals what? Negative 2 x negative what? 4. And we would have had this to be um, x would be equal to negative 5 over 2. Okay, and I will talk about, I'll talk more about this in the, in the presentation tonight. Okay, so this is how you find the domain, um, the domain of a composite function. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably, let me see, I'm gonna probably stop here and I'll make a second video um, because I gotta finish I have to finish working I'll make a, a, a second video uh, of an additional step that we will talk about uh, uh, tonight okay all right thanks bye bye